All right, everyone. Hello. Welcome. It's so, yes, let's all give each other a wave if we're on camera or spirit fingers. We can do spirit fingers as well. So if you feel comfortable, please feel free to come on camera. If not, no worries at all. I am Danielle Beckman. I'm going to be your host for the night. And I am an actress, producer, and coach. My company is The Spirited Storyteller. I'll tell you more about that later. Um, but you, just in case you don't know where you are, you have found yourself at the speakers series with Off the Lane. So uh, the speaker series is um, we run quarterly events full of curated panelists, master classes to benefit the community, which all of you are a part of by showing up. So thank you for being here. Um, tonight, our theme is refresh and reset. And so we hope that this theme helps you transition as more and more of the arts and entertainment industry is coming back into full force. Um, so just a little bit about Off the Lane. We are a licensed nonprofit that was launched in 2019, founded by artists for artists. And uh, we have the goal of empowering artists and creatives by giving back through programming and continued education. So we want Off the Lane to be a home base an inclusive and accessible support system and space. And just if you're curious, other programs that we have, we have a mentorship program, Boost, school partnerships, and a brand new scholarship program, the Anne Ryan King Scholarship, which I'm super excited about. Uh, yeah, so, and oh, a little housekeeping. This session is being recorded and you will receive an email afterwards with a digital goodie bag. And that will have some promo codes for you and a little post-session survey if you wouldn't mind filling that out. Um, all right, so let us get started. There is a really loud bird outside my window. So if you can hear it, enjoy. Um, so I am going, I have the pleasure to introduce um, our first segment. Uh, we are, we have the treat of getting to hear from Jay Rose. So Jay Rose is a spoken word artist born and raised in Queens, New York. 20 years ago, she was inspired by hip hop and now she shares her poetry across the world in person and online, as you can see. So uh, Jay Rose's journey more recently led her to media production and journalism. She has been since heavily involved in the online talk show community. She launched her own show called The Jay Rose Experience, which she, we were just talking about. It's on her shirt, yes. And during the pandemic, she created a virtual space called The Rose Garden for poets to share their work. So we're so excited to have Jay Rose here with us. And she's going to take us through her workshop called rewriting wellness through poetry. So I'm going to pass it on to you, Jay Rose. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. What a great intro. I love that. Like, <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, thank you so much for having me. I'm honored to be a part of this. I love what Off the Lane does, everything that they're about from the moment that I cross paths with, with Off the Lane. So being able to have an opportunity to, to speak at one of your events, I'm like so honored. So thank you for that. Um, and welcome guys. Yeah, so I am a spoken word poet. I do workshops. <clears throat> I do a whole lot of things um, that they all involve some type of creativity and some type of fusion with poetry. Um, so I'm gonna just go through this like mini, like crash course workshop on like writing poetry and doing spoken word um, because not only do I write poetry but I do travel to perform spoken word um, in different cities different states and even like internationally when I was in London I tried once but that doesn't really count like I didn't get to go hard out there so <laughs> I need a do-over um, so I'm going to share my screen real quick and all you guys need is like a pen and paper if you want to like do some of the activities um, and an open mind. And of course, like feel free to ask questions. This is all I know we're like we have time frames where we have to fit in. So I am going to move a little fast. But um, if there's something that you miss, we can always connect afterwards and I can go into it in detail with you more on like on a one on one. 
Um, oh yeah, there it is. <clears throat> all right, <clears throat> you guys hear me all right? Cool. All right, so let me get into my spiel. <laughs> Welcome creatives. I have put together this workshop. This is kind of like a crash course. So we're gonna dabble into a lot of different things here. Um, before we get into it, let me just give you a little bit more of a introduction. I ca they kind of covered this already, but I'm Jay Rose, spoken word poet, talk show host, founder of the Rose Garden Events, which is a creative platform for all creatives, all forms of creative expression um, and entrepreneurship. So that's also a big focus of mine. I've been writing poetry for over 20 years. I've been performing for seven years now. I host creative events like open mics, showcases, pop-ups, um, workshops like this. I'm also the executive producer of the of and the host of the talk show, The J Rose Experience, where I travel to different cities and I interview poets that are based in those cities. I recently came from Tampa. We filmed the fourth season there, but I've had the pleasure of interviewing poets in not only New York, but Atlanta and Philadelphia so far. So if you're in a city or you're from a city, should I say, that I should go to that has a great poetry scene, definitely let me know. Um, so now that you know a little bit more about me, let's like dig right in here. Um, you're gonna need a pen, pencil, paper, and an open mind. Um, what we're gonna talk about is we're gonna get an introduction of the art of spoken word. We're gonna review the elements of writing poetry, discuss a few common themes in poetry, and we're gonna use some prompts to kind of unblock our creativity. And this is really important when you're looking for like that self-care, because sometimes, you know, self-care looks different for everybody. Uh, and if you haven't dabbled into writing, I highly recommend you should try it. Um, you never know what's going to come out of you. I have friends that, you know, as I call them the normals, because they don't have like creative uh, <laughs> talents in, in the arts. So like the normals and I have friends that I've told them like to write through their trauma and write through like their healing. Um, and I've gotten some great feedback from people that I was really surprised that they even listened to me. But, um, you know, writing is really a great way to self care. And what's great about it is you could do it anywhere. You know, you don't have to like schedule an appointment. You don't have to be in a central location. You can literally write anytime you want on anything. <laughs> so um, that's the beauty of it. So let's get started. Um, <clears throat> poetry is a great creative outlet. Uh, people usually write poetry for self-expression, activism, healing, and much more. Um, but we, let's dig into like, what is the difference between spoken word and poetry? Because it is kind of two different way, forms of art. Um, and those of you that are like in theater may appreciate spoken word a little bit more than poetry because as you'll see, spoken word refers to an oral poetic performance. Um, it's based on mainly the poetry as well as the aesthetic qualities. It's performed with like an audience in mind. It relies heavy on rhythm, improvisation, rhyming, wordplay, um, and it's more in your face than traditional poetry. Um, think like, Theatrics, like a spoken word performance is theatrical. Like, yeah, when I, I've seen thousands of poets literally in the years that I've been doing this. And for me, it's the, it's the theatrics for me when they're up there on stage. Those are the, the poets that stand out for me. Um, and how is this different from traditional poetry? Well, poetry is more personal. It contains an artist's thoughts and emotions. And although spoken word does have that, it doesn't contain um, the artist's thoughts and emotion in the way where like, it's not really meant to like provoke much of a reaction like spoken word is. Spoken word, you want to invoke some type of emotion in somebody. Poetry is more like I'm expressing and whether you understand it or not, it doesn't matter. I'm just expressing. Where spoken word is I'm expressing because you need to hear this, like this is important. Whether you understand it or not, you need, I need to have your attention right now. Um, and like I said, it's the theatrics. <laughs> um, so we're going to do a quick activity. I like to do this before um, with all my workshops, before I start really diving into like the inform like information, the technical part of writing and um, performing. It helps you like kind of dump out like the brain trash that's in there kind of blocking you. So we're going to do a one minute free write. 
Um, you're basically gonna put your pen to the paper and you're not gonna stop writing. We're gonna count down for a minute. And even if there's nothing coming to your mind, just write like, I don't know what to write and just keep writing it over and over again. Something will eventually come out. So just keep writing though. But the deal is you cannot stop writing until the time is up. You'll be surprised how long a minute of writing <laughs> is when you can't stop. Um, so if you guys are ready, I'm going to start the timer. Right, three, two, and one. Pens and pencils down. How was that? You can feel free to unmute yourselves if you have something to say. <laughs> um, um, did anybody like start getting poetic right away or was anybody stuck? <laughs> um, yeah, it's, did someone say something? Yeah, it definitely started with just like, I am writing in the speaker series. And then as it kind of like went along, I got a little bit more, I got a little, a couple of rhymes in there. Oh, okay. But it's just like, it, it was interesting just to kind of like, let it go stream of consciousness, right? Right, right. It's almost like a form of meditation, but like writing through it, you know? Um, Cause you know, when you're meditating, you're kind of like, dumping everything out of your head and trying to think of nothing. But this is like, you're dumping it out, but you're like writing it out. So this is great to do when you're, even like when you, if you're a songwriter, when you're about to start getting creative, it's really great to do an exercise like this to kind of like, let me get some of this. Sometimes people are like, start writing their to-do list and they, you know, cause that's what's on their mind. Um, so yeah, I'm glad you guys, uh, <laughs> I enjoyed it. Um, all right, so we're gonna talk about some key elements of spoken word. Um, these are things that are really important. This is what makes a spoken word um, performance uh, really amazing and unforgettable. <clears throat> so one of the key elements, major element is imagery. So by using words and phrases with imagery, you get to speak to the listener's senses. So a lot of uh, a lot of words of imagery are like figures of speech, symbolism, metaphors. Um, here are some examples like a figure of speech is she's fire burning on the dance floor. Like, well, you know, obviously she's not fire, right? It's not literal, but it's a figure of speech saying she must be like a great dancer, you know? Um, then there's symbolism. You know, we see a lot of that in Greek mythology sometimes in a style of personification, that's when you take an inanimate object and you describe it or you, you know, address it as if it was a person. Um, and then there's metaphor, metaphors. And um, I, I don't know, I find these examples, they're like, they're so poetic, like, our words are but crumbs that fall down from the feasts of the mind. Like, that's pretty deep. <laughs> but um, metaphors like that you know they're so thought provoking and you know it makes you look at the world through a different lens so when you use that those type that imagery in your writing um and in your performance it really just adds a, a lot of value to like what you're doing on stage um then we have repetition uh repeating a phrase or an image throughout the poem it creates excitement and it can easily stick like an earworm. And the way a really great example of like poems with repetition um, is like the Edgar Allan Poe, like the Raven, you know, you, by like the third or fourth time, you already know like what the Raven says, right? Nevermore, like, <laughs> um, so like that type of repetition, it like sticks to you. You'll see a lot of, um, 
poets, uh, spoken word artists do like a call and repeat, a call and repeat um, piece, right? A call and response piece, sorry, I'm like tongue twisted. Um, so they'll, they'll say something like, for me, like my motto is keep growing. So if I want to really, um, really pull people into my poem, I'll put that in my poem and I'll say, okay, guys, when you hear me say keep, you say growing, you know, and you know, you, you get the audience to feel like they're participating. They, they're invested in the, in the performance now because they're a part of it. And, you know, it sticks because you're repeating it over and over again through the piece. So um, elements like this really make your poetry like stand out when you're, when you're performing it. Um, and then we have rhyming. Well, for, for me, rhyming, Oh, there's my mouse. Um, <laughs> I was like, where? I didn't know where it was before. So for me, rhyming is in my, this is a, my personal opinion. It's great when you use it in moderation um, throughout the poetry. It's first spoken word. If you're writing a poem that's gonna be read, then like, if you wanna be rhymy, that's all good. But when you're performing spoken word and you wanna have an impactful performance and, and impression, like you want to try to steer away from like the Dr. Susi kind of sounding poetry. It's okay that you don't rhyme, but it doesn't have to be rhyme, rhyme all the time, but you can make it intentional. So you can have parts in your poetry that like have rhyme because, you know, even like rap is poetry, it's rhythm and poetry, you know? So the rhyming is, is cool. Just be, you know, in moderation. Um, and don't be afraid to like test your rhyming skills. Don't just assume that like words, only words that are spelled this similar rhyme, you know, it's okay to like try to think outside that box um, and make, make the rhyming a surprise, you know? A lot of people sometimes, I have poems they don't expect and then I come out with my bars and they're like, oh, wow, that was great. Um, so <laughs> um, that's a really, really important. Um, and this for me is one of the most, for me, I'm, I'm one of those writers. I'm a sensory writer as a poet, because I want to take the person into my words. So sensory details are huge and really, really important in any type of writing, even if you're novel writing and whatever you want to bring the senses into your, into your piece, because it really gets people in the zone. They're like literally in there. So you want to include verbiage that um, talks about sight, sound, touch, smell, and, and taste. Um, writers use the five senses to engage in a reader's interest. And when describing a past event, it's good to like, when you're writing about something that happened to you in the past, it's good to use sensory details. Um, you remember what it smelled like, remember what you heard. Um, there's a big difference. Like I have an example here. Um, <clears throat> Uh, so like, let's say this sentence, this line here, right? I went to the store and bought some flowers. That's a pretty basic sentence. There's no sensory detail in there. Doesn't make it interesting at, at all. It's just a plain basic sentence. But now you want to throw in the sensory details and you can, I have to laugh again because they're, so, <laughs> they're so poetic, these examples. Um, Upon entering the grocery store, I headed directly for the flower department where I spotted yellow tulips. As I tenderly rested the tulips on my rusty shopping cart, I caught a whiff of minty dried eucalyptus. So I added the fragrant forest green bouquet to my cart. Like that is so different from I went to the store and bought flowers. Like it took me there. I smelled the mint. I, I, I immediately imagine a rusty shopping cart, you know, it's just, it takes you there, the color, the yellow tulips. So it makes such a big difference because now you feel connected. You may have like experienced something like this where you bought flowers at the supermarket or a store and you're like, oh yeah. So feeling that connection really adds, again, another layer of value to your performance. Um, <clears throat> okay, good, we are moving, we are moving. If you guys have questions, just like unmute yourself and shout it out. Um, I have kids, so I'm used to like being interrupted all the time. So, it's <laughs> um, so there are a lot of common themes in poetry and I'm just gonna run by a few of them and we'll do a quick activity. 
So these are some of the common po um, themes that you hear in poetry. And of course, love is like one of the main ones. A lot of times when you ask people like why they started writing poetry, love is about 80% of the time what I hear from poets. Um, it's definitely one of the most common topics. And you know, love has different meanings to different people. So the topic can actually go in different directions because you know, there's there's love within family, there's love within friends, you know, there's love within hate. <laughs> so you you hear you uh you hear a lot of poetry that has has that. Um poets usually, you know, they write about the feeling of being loved or falling in love, you know. Um then to piggyback on that, relationships, people talk about relationships a lot, whether they're romantic, friends or family. Um, it, again, it could be very, very general. Like for me, I don't write often about my family, but I've just started dabbling into that because it's part of my healing process. It's part of me getting through, you know, trauma that I experienced or things that I went through, you know, because of my family. Um, so now I'm in a space where I am writing about those type of relationships. So, you know, um, those those type of poems are usually really moving and um, or very like profound and like, like, oh no, she didn't like, okay. Um, then there's the heartbreak poems. We hear, we hear those all the time. Like, you know, he ain't ish, she ain't ish. <laughs> like <laughs> you hear the heartbreak, the pain, the sadness. Um, a lot of times you do hear those poems are also tied into like heartbreak, but I've overcome that or, you know, I'm, I'm past that. Um, but writing can help you get through heartbreak. Um, then there's the poems about the betrayal, distrust, infidelity. Uh, another big topic a lot. I'm a major like advocate for mental health. I have a poem that was published in an anthology that centered around mental health called I'm Not Crazy. And so this is a major, major topic in any type of like creative community because there's so much tie, there's so many ties with create being creative and mental health. I can't tell you how many times, how many people, I think everybody I've ever met in this space um, has discussed, you know, depression, anxiety, um, you know, even like suicidal ideations and, and, so mental health is a major topic. Um, it's also important because these poems can also act as like a testimony for overcoming certain things. It's a voice for people that are don't have that voice or are afraid to speak up on their mental health. It took me a long time to talk, talk about my mental health and the things that I personally went through. And I being able to write through that and write about it has really helped me. Some people paint. Some people, you know, dance. So, you know, whatever your thing is, you know, we do it here in poetry too. <laughs> we, we, we go through it. Um, then there's the social issues, of course. And depending on the, the climate of society, there's always a like an influx of these poems. So like last year during all the like Black Lives Matter stuff that was going on with George Floyd, these poems were like everybody, everywhere you went, there was like social issues and uh, about political issues. And you even hear things about financial issues within certain communities. Um, and then there's, these are the, the self-empowerment pieces tied into the transformational, the ones where like, I've grown from this, this coming of age, this courage, um, having, per, you know, um, perseverance. So <clears throat> these are all really common themes in poetry. You, I'm sure if you're into music, there these are common themes in music as well. Even in art, painting, visual art, you know, people are always trying to express what, what their experiences are with these topics. Um, through their artwork. So if anybody here has, you know, writes or, you know, I'm sure that you have touched on any, any one of these topics at least once in your, in your creative uh, career. Um, all right, so we're gonna do, we're gonna do an activity. Um, let me just press this button. No, I pressed the wrong one. Okay, here we go. Um, <laughs> so we're going to do an activity on sensory words. Okay, we are going to 
pick one of the themes that we just discussed and they're gonna be listed on the next slide. So don't worry if you don't remember them. Um, and what you're gonna do is you are going to describe these topics using sensory details. So you, if you're gonna choose love, for example, you have to hit each sense, okay? So you have to describe love, with, like something that is you see, something that you can touch, something you can smell, hit all five senses, at least one sentence for each sense. Um, and, you know, pick one topic. You have five minutes. I'm, if everybody's done before the five minutes, like just like give me, put, like to put it in the chat, I'm done. So like if everyone's done before the five minutes, I can cut it short. Um, does anybody have any questions on the activity before I click the next slide? All right, cool. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, I have a question. Hey. Hi. <laughs> Hi, I'm at Ikea. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? What's up? So are we just coming up with just words to go along with um, the topics, or are we actually going to write a poem or spoken word? You don't word? have to write a poem. You mm -hmm. can just write a sentence describing. It doesn't have to be poetic. No pressure. Okay. Just kind of like if you're writing about love, what does it look like? What does it physically touch, feel like, you know, smell? Um, what does it sound like? And so on. Okay. All right. Thank you. No problem. Oh, I'm so happy to see you. I didn't see you before. Yeah, I've been here the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> One minute 
to get your descriptions out and paint a picture of your theme? How did it feel? Were you like in your feelings? <laughs> um, and think about what else you would wanna do with that, with those descriptions. Keep them, build on them if you want, Get make a poem out of it, you know? Um, anybody else, uh, anybody have any like feedback? If anybody, does anybody wanna share? Like it's up to you. I felt like it was it was almost difficult for me to stray from a theme like I wanted them all to be together but I was also challenging myself to like lean into the actual sensations whether they right. matched up with each other or not. Mm, mm. Um, this is a great also a great tool to use when you're like practicing on your wordplay. Um, because it gets you, <clears throat> you know, it gets you kind of like thinking about things in ways that you don't normally think about them, you know? Um, it almost like creates like, makes, you know, something that's not really tangible, you're making it tangible, right? Because you're experiencing it through your senses. Um, so it's a great way to pull your listener or your reader in. Um, I'm gonna, so I'm gonna run through this next section really quickly so that I don't take up any more time. Um, but I do wanna tell you, talk to you guys about performance, just some major keys. Um, about performing, whether you are, you know, on stage to sing or whatever it is that you're going to be in front of an audience for, even if it's virtual, like, you know, I tell people like, treat it like it's a real stage, you know, like keep that keeps your skill, like you keep sharpening your skills when you think of every stage you're going to be on, whether it's virtual or in person, think of it as it's in person. Um, so you want to make sure that you're making eye contact um, unless you're like playing an instrument that you have to look at it, <laughs> but you know, make sure you're making eye contact with the audience, make sure that you are projecting your voice. And there's actually breathing exercises that you can do. Um, you can go on YouTube university of YouTube, and you can look, look up some videos on breathing exercises because there's actually ways that you can project your voice without, um, straining your vocal cords. Um, so and, and your posture and your breathing actually plays a part in how you project your voice. And especially as a poet and you're in like performing at a bar or somewhere like a restaurant where people are eating and the more they drink, the louder they get. Like you have to really, and if you're one of those poets that doesn't use a microphone, like then you better have your projection game on point, okay? So do your exercises, breathing exercises, fix your posture. Um, make sure you are enunciating, open your mouth, do exercises, stretch out those muscles in your face before you're gonna perform. Do like, you can, it's all on university YouTube, YouTube University. So go up, go over there and look it up. They've got all the courses for all those um, exercises that you can do. Um, facial expressions and gestures are everything when you're performing spoken word. If you see me, I'm always talking with my hands. It doesn't even matter if I'm performing or not. They are always moving. Um, and also like your facial expressions because that ties in the emotion to what you're saying, right? If you're reading a sad poem, but you're smiling, it sends mixed messages and it's kind of confusing for the audience. So like, if you're reading a sad poem, like you better like make that ugly cry face and like get, <laughs> get it in um, because that's what people are gonna remember you expressing emotion 
where they can actually see it and hear it. Okay, and we did talk about posture. I will be sharing like these slides are going to be, um, I hope that you guys will get them. You guys can send them um, so you can go back and watch the rest. There are some tips here that you guys can read. And there's another crossword activity here that you can do on your own. So like shameless plug, I published a journal for writer's block. It's called the Writer's Unblocked Journal. And um, there's prompts and activities in it. And this is one of the activities. It's a crossword prompt. You pick like three words and you write a poem using it. So you guys will have all of this. Thank you for your time. I appreciate you guys. If you wanna follow me and see more of what I do, please go right ahead and follow me on Instagram. That's usually where I'm at. Um, that's my business and then my personal Instagram. Um, and yeah, tell a friend to tell a friend because I have a lot, of, a lot of great things for all creatives. I'm here for it. So thank you, thank you Off The Lane. Thank you, Jen, thank you, Danielle, like Sophie, everybody, thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, J Rose. Oh, yes, I need to see everyone's virtual clapping. <laughs> I'm gonna give I'm gonna give myself a clap in the upper corner. J Rose, thank you so much. Okay, now I'm gonna be like, I'm gonna use my hands, I'm gonna use my facial expressions. I wanna communicate what is next. Cause we yes, have something look amazing. at you. <laughs> I like that. Um, but thank you so much, J Rose. That was awesome. I wrote, I wrote about transformation and I surprised myself. So thank you. That was Ooh, great. Yes. That, awesome. I like to hear that. I like yeah. To we're, me. and I hope everyone here, uh, follows J Rose and stays in touch. And, um, that was such a gift that you just gave us. So thank you. Um, Awesome. Okay, everyone, we are heading into our breakout rooms momentarily. I'm going to do a lovely introduction of our next two speakers. So um, there's there's going to be one of the groups will stay here in this room, and I'll, I'll let you know who that is, and then everyone else will go into another room. So everyone, anyone who wants to stay here in this room... Uh, I would love to introduce you to Sarah Jacobs. So Sarah Jacobs, give, give a wave, Sarah. There she is. Um, she's a certified holistic nutritional counselor and health coach. She's the creator of This Is Not a Detox, which is a total body holistic health reset for lasting healthy change. I, I need that. Okay. So after spending over 10 years in the entertainment industry, Sarah fell victim to chronic illness and autoimmune disorder, which prompted her to delve deeper into nutritional studies. Now she provides the support and encouragement to others that she wishes that she had sooner through her programs, Smart Mouth Health and the Wellness Project NYC. So her program will be here in this room and it's called Your Holistic Health Reset for Re-Entering the outside world. I think that's going to be awesome. The next guest I want to introduce you to is Sumi Yu. Sumi, can you give a little weight? There she is on her fabulous yoga mat. So Sumi is a professional actress in New York City, as well as an AFAA certified group fitness instructor and a 200 hour certified yoga instructor through Core Power Yoga. Sumi is originally from Tokyo, Japan, and moved to NYC in 2015. Starting this August, Sumi will be seen as a recurring role on the upcoming series Heels on Stars. Yes! Um, on weekends, Sumi teaches yoga virtually on Zoom. She's raised over $1,500 via her fundraiser classes, for which 100% of the profits are being donated to organizations that support Stop Asian Hate, Black Lives Matter, and vaccine funds for India. Snaps for that. I see you, J. Rose. That's the poetry way, right? Okay. Um, and so Sumi's workshop is called Refresh and Reset Yoga Flow. So now is the time where I'm going to send everyone off to their breakout rooms and the Zoom fairies will do their work. So enjoy, everyone. We'll see you back in about 20, 30 minutes. I'm so happy to have me. <gasps> oh, recording is in progress, as you may have heard, not to be missed. Um, so we're going to get started right away since we only have a half an hour. And I want to get you guys moving. So if you're not set up yet, yeah, get a yoga mat. Love your blue yoga mat, J-Rose. Um, and 
I'm gonna get this playlist started and you can cozy on up into a child's pose when you're ready so that we can all meet on our mats. Take your time if you're not there yet. Um, child pose of your choice. Like some people like to have their knees together. Some people like to have their knees spread out wide to the long edges of their mat. So we'll meet there when you're ready. And I'm gonna and, um, start to lengthen your inhales and exhales here. Really take your time. And just a little um, warning at the end of class, you might see something on your screen that's like, break our room might end, but just ignore that. You know, stay in the moment. I'll guide you through it. So don't worry about any like technical stuff. It's just you and your mat and just my voice guiding you today. So don't worry about any stuff that pops up on the screen. So as you're here in your child's pose, think about with each deep, long inhale, crawling your fingertips out an inch or so forward to lengthen. And then with each open mouth exhale, start to sink your hips down towards your heels here. Maybe you rock your head side to side to massage your forehead, your third eye center. But really just take this time to be with yourself, to slow down your breath, to really feel that nice side stretch in the ribs, opening in the hips. We spend a lot of time sitting, our hips are really tight. And as you guys may be feeling right now with this pandemic, sort of ending, we're, we're all kind of jumping back into the really busy schedule of things. So I wanna take this class as a reminder for you that you always have this time for yourself, even if we only have 30 minutes today, that you deserve this time to be with yourself. Even just taking a few stretches, a few long breaths can be really nourishing. So I hope we can all enjoy that together collectively. So on your next inhale, come on up to a tabletop position. You're gonna plant your hands on the mat directly below your shoulders and your knees directly underneath your hips. Spread your fingertips wide and press away into the mat so you grow tall. Engage your navel into your spine. As you press away from your mat, think about flexing your back towards the ceiling here. And let's, let's um, stretch the back of your neck. Back of your neck is nice and long and you're not scrunched in. One nice long line from the crown of your head all the way down to your tailbone. Beautiful, everyone. Now, from this neutral tabletop, we'll do is cat cow. So inhale, drop your belly button, roll your shoulders down and back, lift your gaze in front of the room. And then exhale, cat pose, draw your belly button up towards your spine, really dome that upper back, really press away from the mat. One more time, inhale, cow pose, drop your belly shoulders away from the ears and then exhale cat pose beautiful one more time just like this inhale cow pose moving one vertebrae at a time and then exhale cat pose ever so slowly just warming up that spine beautiful and then tuck your toes send your hips up and back downward facing dog Feel free to pedal it out here, maybe bending one knee and then the other. You can bring your gaze underneath one armpit and then the other, kind of just warm up that back. Thinking about your tailbone drawing down, but lifting your hips up and back. So your chest is coming towards your thighs, your heels are going down towards the mat. Keep those fingers spread wide, energy in the forefinger and the thumb here to protect your wrist and really Press away from the mat here so you can open up your upper back, shoulders away from the ears. Nice opening in the back here. Gorgeous. Now, gaze forward, bend your knees, lift your heels, and then slowly walk your feet behind your wrists here. So your feet are hip width distance apart. Then grab opposite elbows, and we're gonna hang heavy here. Ragdoll pose. Gentle bend in the knees. Maybe you sway side to side. Maybe you rock your head, yes, shake your head, no. Really warming up the spine, letting everything go, deepening that breath. And when you're ready, plant your palms onto the mat, heel toe your feet together so your big toes touch, leaving a sliver of space between your heels. 
And we're going to roll up one vertebrae at a time. Taking your time here. Gentle bend in the knees. Drawing your tailbone down and under. Rolling your shoulders down and back up to the top. Head is the last thing to come up. Beautiful. Inhale, draw both hands to heart center. And then exhale, close your eyes, drop your shoulders. We'll take this time to set our intention for class. If you have an intention in mind, you can bring that to your mat today. Maybe it's something you journaled in Jay Rose's class earlier. Maybe it's a word you, or a theme you thought about in that spoken word exercise we just did. If you'd like to join in on my intention, my intention is I am growing. I want us to focus on how much you can grow in just this next 20-ish so minutes we have, and also to reflect on how much growth we've done in this last year. And also taking that with us so we can continue to grow as we journey forward post-pandemic. Gently flutter your eyelids open, draw your hands down by your side, and we'll keep our intentions in mind as we pull Inhale, mountain pose, fire your fingertips up towards the sky, and breathe here. Spread your toes wide onto the mat, energy shooting across all four corners of your feet. Small micro bend in the knees, draw your tailbone under and engage your navel in towards your spine here to engage that core. Lift your heart and hollow out through the armpits. Magnetize your pinky fingers in towards one another so your biceps and triceps are working strongly here. Beautiful. One more inhale, lift up one more inch. And then exhale forward fold, draw your hands through heart center, melt down. Inhale, halfway lift, place your hands on your shins or your thighs and pause and breathe here. Press away from your legs here so you can grow even longer. One long line from the crown of the head to the tailbone. Think of this as the flat spine here and engage your core so that you're not arching your lower back. Heart is higher than the hips here. Energy is in the balls of the feet and squeeze your shoulder blades together so your back is nice and engaged. Beautiful. Shoulders are away from the ears. Gorgeous. Inhale. And then exhale, plant your palms, send your feet back, high plank pose. I'm going to cue a chaturanga here, but option to hold high plank or take this on your knees. If you're taking a chaturanga with me, inhale, shift your weight forward so your shoulders are just over your wrist, you're on your tippy toes. And then exhale, bend your elbows 90 degrees, no further, hugging into your ribs. Beautiful. Inhale, flip up to upward facing dogs for the shoelace sides of your feet. Thighs are lifting off the mat, shoulders away from the ears. And then exhale, downward facing dog. Beautiful. So now we're going to flow breath to movement. Again, keep your intention in mind as we flow. Inhale, gaze forward, bend your knees, lift your heels. Exhale, step, walk, float your way to the top of the mat, however you'd like. Inhale, halfway lift, press away from those legs, flatten the spine. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, mountain pose, reach up tall, grow tall, lift your heart. Exhale, forward fold, hands through heart center. Inhale, halfway lift, shoulders away from the ears. Exhale, high to low plank of your choice. Option to take this on your knees, option to hold high plank. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. We'll flow it out one more time. Inhale, gaze forward, bend your knees, lift your heels. Exhale, step or float your way to the top of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift, flat spine. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, mountain pose, grow tall energy shooting out through your feet. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, lengthen the spine. Exhale, high to low plank of your choice. Option to hold high plank and skip it. Inhale, upward facing dog. Shoulders away from the ears. Exhale, we'll all meet in downward facing dog. So strong, everyone. We will keep moving forward. Inhale, gaze forward, bend your knees, lift your heels. Exhale, step or float your way to the top of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift, reset the spine. Exhale, forward fold. Listen for the change here. 
Inhale, chair pose. Sit back in your chair and shoot your fingertips up in front of you. Gorgeous. Keep breathing here. Imagine there's a block between your thighs and squeeze everything in towards the midline. Draw your shoulders away from your ears and energy shooting out to your fingertips. Weight is in the heels of your feet. One more breath. You've got this. Inhale. Exhale, forward fold. No, forward. So strong, everyone. Good job. Inhale, halfway lift. Reset that spine. Exhale, high to low plank of your choice. Option to skip at any point or take it on your knees if you get tired. Beautiful options. Inhale, up dog. And then exhale, downward facing dog. We'll keep moving forward. Inhale, draw your right heel high. Three-legged dog here. And pause. Spiral your inner thigh up towards the ceiling so all five toes are facing down towards the mat. Beautiful. Flex your right butt up so that you lift your right foot one inch higher. Inhale. And then exhale, gently step it through between your palms without making a sound. Save it nice and controlled. Beautiful. Now spiral the left heel down so you can inhale, come up to warrior two, whatever that means for you. Maybe you adjust your stance here. Gorgeous. And then pause and breathe here. We'll adjust our stance here. So bring your hands onto your hips here and think about pressing into the outside edge of that left foot. The left toe should be facing the left front corner of the mat and start to put, press down the outside edge of that foot so that you flex your left butt cheek so your left hip comes forward, right hip, hip comes back. Lunge deeper into that right shin. Beautiful. And then when you're ready, extend your arms out in front of you. Energy shooting out through the fingertips. Crown of the head is nice and tall. It's like you're pushing down on someone else's hands, bringing them up. Beautiful. Keeping your legs as they are. Inhale. Exhale, extended side angle. Drop your right arm down, left arm high. Option to place your elbow on top of your right leg. Either way, you're pressing into that right leg so you can open even further, spreading your collarbones out. Squeezing your shoulder blades. Beautiful. Roll that top shoulder down and back. Gorgeous. Now keep your legs as they are. Inhale, reverse warrior. Lift your right arm high and come back into a side bend rather than a back bend. Think of your torso facing the left side of the room so you feel this nice stretch in the right side. Beautiful. Inhale. And then exhale, high to low plank of your choice. Really beautiful. Option to float that right foot. It feels good. Oh, beautiful choice. It's amazing. Up dog. And then we'll meet and down dog. Beautiful. We're, I can feel that sweat coming along. Left side. Inhale, draw your left leg high again. Pause and breathe here. Bring that inner thigh up so all five left toes are facing down towards the mat. Flex that left booty to lift that foot up. One more inch. Inhale. Exhale, gently step it through, low lunge. Beautiful. Spin that back heel down. Inhale, warrior two. Come into warrior two on the right side. And then place your hands on your hips. Self-adjustment here as well. The knife edge of that right foot really presses into the mat to flex that right booty, to shift that right hip forward. Left hip comes back as you lunge deeper into that left leg. Beautiful. Now extend your arms out in either direction. Energy shooting out through the fingertips, really press down as if someone's trying to press against your hand. Grow tall in the crown of the head. Lift your navel towards your spine. Inhale. Exhale, extended side angle. Drop your left arm down, right arm high. And thinking about pressing into that left leg, we spiral even more, ripping apart at the collarbone. Crown of the head is nice and long. One long line from the crown of the head to your tailbone. Beautiful. Keeping your legs as they are. Inhale, reverse warrior. Lift your left arm high this time. Again, thinking of this as a side bend. Your torso is facing the right side of the mat here. Or just inhale. And then exhale, high to low plank of your choice. Woo! Getting that sweat on, building that heat. We are refreshing and resetting. Inhale, up dog. And then we'll meet. Exhale, downward facing dog. Let's take a collective inhale here. And then a big open mouth exhale. <sighs> One more just like that. Inhale. Exhale, open mouth exhale. <sighs> Beautiful. Now we'll slow this rest to movement. You know the sequence now. You've got this. Inhale, gaze forward. Bend your knees. Lift your heels. Exhale, step or float your way to the top of the mat. 
Inhale, halfway lift, grow long, shoulders away from the ears. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, chair pose, sit back in your chair, reach your fingertips high towards you. Beautiful, weight is in the heels. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, press away from your legs, grow long. Exhale, high to low plank of your choice. Option to take it on your knees, option to skip it. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, downward facing dog. Great option. Inhale, draw your right leg high. Exhale, gently step it through between your palms. Beautiful. Spiral that left foot down. Inhale, warrior two. Lunge deep, grow strong. Energy out your fingertips. Exhale, extended side angle. Keep your legs just as it is. Inhale, reverse warrior, reach back, reach long. Exhale, extend, oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> High to low plank of your chest. Inhale, up dog, when you're ready. No rush, your pace, your flow. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, draw your left leg high. Exhale, gently step it through, low lunge. And your back heel down, inhale, warrior two to the right. Exhale, extended side angle. Inhale, reverse warrior, keep that bend in your front leg. Exhale, high to low plank of your choice. Beautiful. Inhale, up dog, really strong choice, awesome. Exhale, down dog when you're ready, no rush. Beautiful, we'll take that one more time just with a few little changes so we can get a little more stretching in. Inhale, gaze forward, bend your knees, lift your heels. Exhale, step or float your way to the top of your mat. Inhale, halfway lift, reset the spine. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, chair pose, sit back in your chair. Down one more inch deeper, you've got this. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, high to low plank of your choice. Option to skip, option to take on your knees. All strong options. Inhale, up dog. Beautiful. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, draw your right leg high. Exhale, gently step it through, low lunge. Bend your back, heel down. Inhale, warrior two, grow strong right away. Exhale, extend this side angle. Draw your right arm down, left arm tall. Keep your leg as it is. Inhale, reverse warrior. Listen for the change here. Exhale, uh, warrior two. Keep your legs as they are. Just come back to your warrior two position. Beautiful. Inhale, straighten that front leg. Exhale, triangle pose. Bend your hips back, reach your right arm forward as far as it can go until you can't go any further. And then tick tock your right arm down, your left arm high. So it looks like extended side angles, but your legs are straight this time. And this is a big hip opener. Keep this stretch active. Lift your belly off that right thigh so you can engage your core here. Roll that top shoulder down and back and press your right arm into your right leg so you can twist even deeper. Beautiful. Keep breathing here. And then on your next inhale, start to come up halfway and then turn your front toes towards the left side of the mat here. And exhale, we're gonna take a wide-legged forward fold if I'm facing you. We're just gonna drop down, place your hands wherever it feels good, on the mat, on your ankles, on your shins. And relax here, if it feels good, yes. Uh, move your hips around, bend your knees, whatever feels good here. You can bend your knees any amount to relieve any pressure from your lower back. And take this time to breathe, remember to breathe. We've been kind of huffing and puffing, but you know, let go of any t unnecessary tension you're holding in your face. Your jaw, brows, shoulders, neck, everything, and just hang here. And then when you're ready, start to crawl your way towards the front of the mat so your right leg is in front. And come into a low lunge here with your right leg in the front of the mat. Beautiful. 
And then now we're gonna heel toe our right foot to the outside edge of our mat and both hands are gonna be in the middle of the mat. Beautiful. And we're gonna take a runner's lunge here. So option to drop your back knee here. And if it feels good, option to drop down to your elbows and rest here. If not, it feels good, you know, you can bring your knee in towards the middle. You can hang up high here and focus on your hips. Do whatever feels restorative here. Remembering your intention. The mind, I am growing and I'm just noticing how I'm feeling right now, how I feel differently from the beginning of class. Having compassion for myself for where I'm at in my practice today and knowing that practice is ever changing, ever growing, just like I am as a person. Again, letting go of any unnecessary tension you may be holding in your face. And letting your breath go if you're holding your breath at all. When you're ready, come on up to your hands. Heel toe that foot back into the center. Tuck your back toes, lift your back knee, send that front foot to meet the back and take a flow here if it feels good. Or option to meet in down dog. Really strong, everyone. We'll meet in down dog and we'll take the other side. Beautiful. Inhale, draw the left leg high. And then exhale, gently step it through, low lunge. Then the back heel down, inhale, warrior two. And then exhale, extended side angle, dropping that left arm down, right arm to grow tall. Keep your front leg as it is. Inhale, reverse warrior, reach up and back, big side stretch of the left wrist. And then change here. Exhale, warrior two. Come back to your warrior pose. Beautiful. Inhale, straighten that front leg. Lift tall in the crown of your head. Engage your core. And then exhale, triangle pose. Send your hips back. Reach your left fingertips forward till it can't reach any further. And then lift your right arm high. Triangle pose. Again, really pressing into that, that left hand, into that left leg so you can twist even further. Reach tall with your right fingertips. Lift your navel up towards your spine and engage that core. Actively draw your shoulders away from your ears. Beautiful. And then on your next inhale, drop that top arm. Start to spin your front toes towards the right side of the room here. And then exhale. We'll take a wide-legged forward fold on this side. If it feels good on this side, you can interlace your hands behind your back here and draw your hands towards your booty here. So you can get this nice stretch in your shoulders as well. Again, let go of any tension. Take a big exhale if you're holding in any breath. Just be with yourself here. Notice whatever you're feeling. And when you're ready, place your hands down onto the mat and make your way to a lunge to the front of the mat here. Left leg is in front. Beautiful. And then again, heel toe your left foot to the outside edges of the mat, keeping your hands down where it is. Drop your knee if it feels good. Drop down your elbows if it feels good. And hang here. You can drop your head, close your eyes. Noticing if this side feels different. And that's okay. I like to think of the halves of our bodies as siblings and not twins. And they ask for different things because they have different needs. We're not predictable. That's what makes us awesome. Breathe into that hip here. And then when you're ready, come on up to your hands. Heel toe that foot back in between your hands. Tuck that back toe, lift that back knee and meet your front foot with your back. Take one last flow here if it feels good. Beautiful option. Up dog and then we will meet in a down dog. Beautiful. Drop down to your knees when you're ready. 
and we're gonna take a little little back bend start to slow things down thank our spines for working so hard so when you're ready meet me on your feet and lower your back down onto the mat we're gonna take a bridge pose so place your feet hip width distance apart your feet are behind your glutes here and your palms are facing down towards the mat rest everything down onto the mat here Take one big open mouth exhale to let all the stale air. And then inhale, start to lift your hips up towards the ceiling here. So you can feel this big stretch in your lower back. Pressing your head down onto the mat to protect your neck. If it feels good in your body, interlace your hands underneath you on the mat here and press your hips even higher towards the ceiling. Imagine there's a block between your thighs so that your thighs are nice and active and energetic. Pressing into the heels to lift your hips even higher. One more inhale. Exhale, lower it down. Send your left leg out long. Draw your right knee into your chest. And we're going to take a lovely supine twist to wind down. So drop your right knee towards the left side of you. And bring your gaze towards your right side. Feel this nice little twist here. For the rest of class, you can keep your eyes closed. Just be with yourself here. No need to look at the screen anymore. These last few minutes to yourself that you gave to yourself. Notice them, notice how you feel. Notice if you feel any differently from the beginning of class. Draw your right knee in the middle. You can keep your eyes closed. Switch it out with the left knee. And when you're ready, drop that left knee towards the left side, bring your gaze, or sorry, right side, and then bring your gaze to the left. Notice any feelings that came up today. Just notice, you don't have to have come up with any conclusion or judgment about how you're feeling today. Just noticing is a favor in itself to ourselves because we're letting ourselves know, hey, I'm here, I'm listening, I'll be your friend. And then when you're ready, draw both knees in to the center. Grab the outside edges of your feet and we'll take one last happy baby. Maybe you extend one leg out and then the other. And then when you're ready, draw your knees into your chest, hug everything into the middle, wrap your arms around your legs, lift your head, neck, and shoulders, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze everything in. One last inhale, and then exhale, final resting pose, Shavasana. I'll keep track of the time, so it'll be a short little Shavasana, but give these next 60 seconds to be with yourself. Let your to-do list stay away on the sidelines. Give these last moments to yourself. I'll guide you out when it's time. Start to wiggle your toes, your fingers. Start to deepen the breath here to energize your body. So uh, you can keep your eyes closed. I'm not gonna rush you guys to get up, but we're gonna get blasted back in 30 seconds. So just lay here. You know, you can get up in your own time. You'll get blasted back anyway, the main room. But I hope you give back thanks to your body for resting. Even if it was a short little shavasana, just thank yourself for just giving yourself this time in these busy moments to give back to yourself. Your body thanks you. I thank you. 
So you have 10 seconds till we're blasted back. Just want to tell you guys I love you. Thank you for being here. And I hope you enjoyed. Mom, I'll see you in the other room so soon. I think it's been done. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can hear you great. Good. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen, set my life up over here so that it makes sense for your life. Can you guys see it? Good. I love thumbs up. Yes. Uh, so thank you, Danielle, for that intro. Um, yes, I am a holistic nutritional counselor and health coach. Um, and really today, I'm just here to be a facilitator because you guys are actually doing all the work. I'm going to be talking a lot, but you guys are actually going to be the, doing the doing. So um, if you have a pen and paper handy, as you probably do, because we all just wrote poetry, um, that would be helpful. Also, if you want to use your notes on your phone or something, that's fine too. If you want to take screenshots of the presentation so that you can then go back to it later, that's helpful too. Um, you know, I'm going to ask some questions along the way and you might just not be in the mood to answer them right now, which is totally valid. Um, so then you can come back to them later and kind of, you know, do this on your own time. Um, so, you know, a little setup here, I guess, I mean, we've all been through a time, right? It's like, we're coming out of this year and a half. Most have probably been vaccinated, maybe, hopefully. And, uh, you know, we're kind of re-entering polite society. We've kind of created these walls around ourselves to protect ourselves, rightfully so, um, for, you know, the past however long. And, and now it's time kind of to break those walls down and re-enter the world. And, you know, we've all kind of looked like this girl for about a year and a half. When, I mean, I'm gonna be honest, internally, I felt like this guy. Uh, I mean, literally, this is what we've kind of been dealing with, right? Like we have been having to protect ourselves. We have been taking in the news cycle, Lord help us. And it's like a lot, right? We've been dealing with a lot. And so, you know, it's no surprise if you are feeling the feels now that we're entering this sort of transitional period and, and we're re-entering the outside world, um, you know, people keep talking about going back to normal and going back to normal. And, and the truth of the matter is that we're not going back to normal. Nothing is freaking normal about this. Um, you know, we're different people entering a completely different world. And, uh, and that's okay to acknowledge and to give ourselves a little grace. Um, but the coolest thing about this is that we can look at this as an opportunity. So, you know, when the pandemic hit, it was sort of like, uh, I forgot to start my timer. So somebody will just have to tell me where I'm at, but I just started it now. But um, so, uh, you know, when the pandemic hit, it was sort of like, we had no choice, right? It was like, you stay inside. It was like, we literally had maybe 24 hours, maybe to like get used to what was happening. And then it was like, you, that's just what you were doing. You just had to live with that and move on with your life. But now we kind of have this opportunity. We kind of went through this great pause and now we're going through what I'm going to call the great reset. Like we get an opportunity to curate to a certain degree our lives moving forward. And how freaking cool is that? We get to decide what we're gonna resubscribe to. Um, so, you know, I'm gonna talk about some ways that we can kind of set ourselves up to move forward through this trans transition into whatever's next in health. So, um, you know, the fact that we've all been through some stuff can't just be forgotten, right? Like we're all human, um, but we really do have this opportunity to create the life that we wanna live. And, uh, and a lot of times that can mean change, which is scary and uh, disorienting and uncomfortable. And, um, you know, as somebody that struggles with anxiety, it's, it's something that I constantly have to remind myself is that just because something is uncomfortable does not mean that it is bad. Um, and so, you know, if, if something in your experiences is sort of pushing you towards change, it's important to listen to that. Um, 
it's not always the easy thing to do or the comfortable thing to do. But if, if you're feeling, I mean, think about it. It's sort of like, um, like a, a snow globe, right? It's like our lives got shaken up by this pandemic. And then the snow is going to settle in a different place every time. Right. And so I'm going to say it one more time. If something from your experience is pushing you towards change, it's important to listen to that. You don't necessarily have to overhaul, but you can take some of the lessons from that and move forward. So I'm going to leave that right there. Do with it what you will. Um, and so now we're talking about the setup. So we're going to set up uh, our uh, our holistic health reset. So it's important to integrate everything that we've learned along the way, right? So we've been through this mess. It should be a lesson. We should take something from it for God's sakes. We're going to get something, right? So here are some questions that you can kind of ask yourself. You have your, your pen and paper, you know, and often people are talking right now about all the things that they can't wait to get back to. It's like, I can't wait to go to the movies. I can't wait to go to live theater. I can't wait for parties. I can't wait for whatever. Um, but Thinking about this on the flip side is also really, really valuable. So what do you not miss from your pre-pandemic life? What do you not want to resubscribe to? What do you not want to invite back in? It's a little bit kind of a scary question, but, um, but interesting to ask yourself nonetheless. So I'll give you a couple seconds to answer that one. And you guys can always feel free to, um, you know, to drop anything in the chat or, uh, or unmute yourself and ask. This is pretty informal. Again, this is like a, a workshop for you. So feel free to, if you have questions, comments, um, feel free to shout them out. And then the next question is, okay, so we talked about bef the before. Let's talk about the during, right? It's like, okay, so we've been th through this and for the most part, it was probably pretty crappy, but what can we take out of this? So what do you like about your pandemic life? What has been like not so bad? Or what's something you've been able to work on that you hadn't been able to before? What's something from your pandemic life that you wanna bring forward with you? Got some writers. Yoga pants. God, Danielle. I'm wearing jeans. I'm wearing hard pants right now. <laughs> Although I have to say, I'm one of those really weird people that thinks jeans is really comfortable. Jeans are really comfortable. I don't know. People think I'm crazy. Oh. Okay. So now that we've kind of talked about that, right, we've processed the things from before, and you can use those questions kind of on really macro things in your life. We're going to kind of look kind of micro, and we're going to talk about health and wellness um, and how those questions pertain to health, health and wellness. But those are really good questions, um, you know, to kind of ask just moving forward in general. Um, so now we're gonna talk about the plan. So this is kind of where you guys are going to develop your own roadmap for your reset. Um, so it's important to remember that when you really, really wanna to commit to something, you really wanna make a change, you make it concrete. It's not nebulous or amorphous. It's very defined steps at defined intervals. So we're very specific, right? So it's not like, oh, I'm gonna work out more. It's like, I'm gonna do this workout on these days. Um, or maybe, maybe you need to prioritize rest. And so you're not going to say like, I, I'm going to rest more. You say, I'm going to do X amount of restorative yoga per day or whatever. Um, so it's, it's important to remember to be very specific. So you're like, what are we signing up for here? Well, <laughs> Uh, you are going to develop your own two week reset that you can commit to if you so choose uh, so that when you move through this transitional period and out into the outside world, you sort of feel like the best version of yourself um, and you feel good. It's like we've spent all of this time doing whatever. It's like you should now move forward feeling good. Um, 
And so whatever this year and a half has been like for you, this is sort of for you to determine what you need and then gift it to yourself, right? So two weeks of commitment, total commitment, two weeks and a detailed plan of action. So I will give you an example. So this is pretty hardcore, uh, but this is what I walk people through in my health coaching practice. This is what I use personally when I need a holistic health reset. It is available to me all the time and I use it all the time. Um, and it's been really life-changing for a lot of people. Uh, so five minutes of daily meditation, a multivitamin and a probiotic daily. That's one of those things that you probably should do all the time, but it just kind of falls by the wayside, but you make it a concrete thing. Lemon water, fresh lemon water every morning, super hydrating. Uh, lemon is really good for your natural detoxification systems, vitamin C, and there's this element of ritual to it that's really, really nice, something to kind of come back to every day. And it's also something that kind of starts your day um, just in a healthy direction. Like you feel like you can really check that off the list, you know? Um, so I remove added sugar. Yeah, Jen, somehow this lemon water, uh, Jen says, I love starting my day with lemon water. Somehow it really is like life-changing for a lot of people. It's kind of crazy. So if you've never tried it, I would recommend trying it because it, it really is wonderful and use a fresh lemon. Um, not that little squeezy box thing, a little squeezy lemon. Now go. Uh, so shun added sugar. So I remove all added sugar. It's a hard thing to do if you've never done it before. Um, but this is where you, you know, might want to look at your packaged foods, your condiments, things like that. Um, and it's really easy if you stick to whole food sources. Um, but so typically, you know, your, your sugar source would be from something like whole fruit. Uh, limit caffeine. This one is controversial. Notice how I don't say remove caffeine. Uh, limit caffeine. You know, this is one of those things that's, um, you know, a lot of people, I think, overuse caffeine and then therefore um, it can be an issue. Uh, I don't think necessarily that there's anything wrong with coffee. It's really good for you cognitively. It's got a lot of antioxidants. So like if, if your thing is a coffee in the morning, great, good for you, right? Um, but also if you drink coffee throughout the day and then you wonder why you can't sleep at night or you have really high anxiety, maybe we should limit that. Uh, remove dairy and gluten, another controversial one. Do I think that everyone needs to go dairy and gluten free? No. Do I think that everybody can benefit from maybe taking a two week break? Yes. Uh, they're fairly inflammatory foods. Again, we're talking about bringing the body back to baseline. And you can take all of these or you can take none of these. I'm just giving you an example of what, of what a reset could look like, right? And then to move every day. And I say it this way because some days you're gonna feel you know, like doing an hour long whatever run and other days you're like, I just need a real nice yoga flow, you know? And other times you're really busy and you get to the end of the day and you're like, crap, I didn't do my workout. But if, you're, if the goal is to move every day, there's always time for that. So you could do a quick five minute yoga class um, or you know, a little yoga flow. You can do some like squats while you're brushing your teeth, dance while you're getting ready for bed, whatever your thing is, move every day. Cause they've also found that you can benefit wildly from just 10 minutes of exercise a day. That's it, 10 minutes. Um, so, this is the guideline. Oh, do you, Jenna, calf raises? I bet you have banging calves, just saying. Uh, <laughs> this is what I use. You are now going to create your own. And again, you can take all of these, you can take none of them, okay? If I can, yeah, there we go. Okay, so this is where you're gonna create your own reset. And it is all about you and you can be as selfish as you want to be. That's like, I love the word selfish. It's so good. It's not bad. Um, so this is, you're going to create your plan. So ideally it has a mental element, a physical element and a nutritional element. Now you might not need to go as ham as the, this is not a detox. What I just showed you, maybe you need something softer. Maybe you need something that really nourishes your mental well-being. And so maybe yours would be something like 
you know, for the mental element, like meditation or journaling every day. Uh, and the physical element would be 10 minutes of movement a day or a morning walk in nature or something of the sort. And then your nutritional element is a probiotic daily because probiotics can be very beneficial for your mental well being. So that could be yours, right? This is all about you and what your body needs. And I'm going to give you guys a couple seconds to kind of come up with your own. And I would advise you just to write down whatever comes to mind and edit later, right? So if you're just like, oh, it would be great to do X, Y, or Z, like, oh, I've always really wanted to, you know, create this habit or whatever, just do a dump of all the things that you could possibly do, you know, in these three buckets, mental, physical, nutritional, and then edit later. I love it. You guys are writing a lot. Like <laughs> I was wondering if this was going to be difficult for people to be like, oh, I don't know what I want to do, but it looks like you guys know exactly what you want to do. Hi, Leah, your hair is so cute. <laughs> okay. Okay. Again, you can always come back to this, take a screenshot, do your thing. Okay, so the dedication, this is finding your why. So we've talked about what you're doing, now we're gonna talk about how you're gonna do it. Um, so motivation, is, this is just a side note, motivation is important, but it's not everything. Motivation comes and goes. Sometimes autopilot is uh, just as good, right? Gets whatever gets it done. Um, but motivation is really, really important to talk about and think about. Um, and it's also an interesting one because there are different types of motivation. Uh, you have extrinsic motivation and intrinsic motivation. And extrinsic motivation is sort of like those outside sources that kind of keep you going. Things like, um, like external rewards like money, or maybe you reward yourself with a vacation or competition or something like that. Think about it like the carrot dangling, right? And those are really, really good for short-term motivation. But then there's intrinsic motivation, which is the internal stuff, right? It's more personal. It's like, uh, you know, I wanna be healthy so that I can live long for my family, or I wanna be happier and, you know, I wanna reduce my anxiety and my stress, um, or I wanna stave off chronic illness or, you know, whatever yours might be. But those, those intrinsic things, those internal things are what are gonna keep you going in the long run. So, um, you know, it's, it's good to have a healthy mix of the two, obviously, so that you can kind of keep your motivation going and you can achieve success. So before we get to talking about how you, you know, identifying your motivations, we're going to talk about obstacles as well, because we want to address our obstacles so that they do not become excuses. I think it was like Michael Jordan who said, like, don't let your obstacles become your excuses or something like that. It might be butchering that, but same idea, right? Um, so we want to, the biggest way we can do this is to plan ahead. So things to consider, limiting beliefs. I've never done this before. I can't do this. I, um, I've never followed through with anything. I can't eat healthy. I, whatever, whatever your thing is, it's a belief. It's not a fact. Uh, important to note. Fear, we've talked about this before, this can be kind of scary. People often don't think about it in terms of making healthy, healthy changes, but it can be scary. Um, it can feel really big and, uh, and hard to accomplish, or um, you know, maybe it's a fear of success or a fear, fear of failure, um, all kinds of things. Environment, you wanna set yourself up 
for success. So, you know, you want to make this the lowest barrier to entry. So getting rid of the crappy food that you have laying around that you don't feel good after you eat all the time or buying new fitness, you know, whatever that you need to do to get yourself jazzed or, um, uh, you know, what, whatever your thing is in order to prep your environment, do that. Uh, your schedule, we talked about that before, making a clear time for everything. And then people having a supportive community. They found that one of the biggest indicators to success is who you surround yourself with. Um, and so, you know, if you don't have a, a supportive partner, that can be difficult. Um, but this is two weeks, right? We're talking about two weeks. Carve out, be selfish, find your space. Um, I'm not saying like get a divorce or anything, but like carve out that space for you for two weeks to do you, right? Maybe you're eating different meals. Maybe you're, I don't know, whatever your thing is. Um, I hear a lot all the time. It's hard. It's hard, but it's two weeks. Be so selfish. Be selfish. <laughs> I love telling people to be selfish because nobody ever is. Okay. So now we're going to talk about yours, right? Um, and Danielle, if you wouldn't mind telling me how long I have, I would appreciate that. Um, so why are you doing this? What is your motivation? Thanks, Danielle. And remember the mix of intrinsic and extrinsic. So you might need to create some extrinsic motivations. And then why now? I mean, this can kind of harken back to that setup that we did talking about change. I'd be interested to know this next one. So what might be hard for you? Identifying some of your obstacles. What might get in the way? And if you guys want to share, I'd be I'd love to hear. You don't have to, but if you'd if you'd like to. Ah, uh, Jen, I hear that. Yeah, Danielle, the whole um, 21 days to change a habit, I have definitely heard that too. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit in a minute. So the obstacle for you is changing the actual habit. So that's interesting. So the other thing, because I think Charles Duhigg was the one that wrote the book on habits and he talks about the 21 day habits. But the other thing is we talked about that auto automation element. And that is one thing where, um, you know, when, when motivation fails us, automation kicks in, right? And so to make something a habit, attach it to something that you already do. So something like, um, I think it was Jenna that said that she does calf raises, uh, was it Jenna, I think, that says that she does calf raises while she's brushing, brushing her teeth, right? Or, um, you know, when you wake up, you have the glass of lemon water, um, or, you know, you take your probiotic with lunch, or whatever it is, is like you attach it to something that you already do every day that's already part of your daily routine, and that can help you solidify a habit. Just a little tidbit there. Oh, Makia, I think I'm, I hope that I'm saying your name right. It's a beautiful name. Uh, why am I doing this to become a better version of myself? I feel abundant energy surround me when I'm doing positive things and what I love. And I think that we can all identify with that for sure. 
potential obstacle of how I tend to cope when I feel super busy and exhausted. I tend to just veg out on my phone or take long naps instead of doing active things to benefit myself. I always go towards things that sort of turn my brain off. You know, what's interesting about that and what I'm seeing and what you're saying is interesting because you're talking about um, vegging out on your phone or taking long naps. Not that long naps are, are bad. I'm, that's not definitely not what I'm saying. But oftentimes we, we, we look to things like our phones or our television and we think that we're shutting off when our brains are actually very, very active that whole time, right? So when we're talking about rest, we're talking about active rest. It's like, what? But, and this is where something like motive or uh, meditation or yoga, this is actively slowing down the brain. And it's really funny and it's, it's like totally counterintuitive, but true rest, true um, rejuvenation happens when we actively rest. Strange, but so I recommend, I mean, I, I really recommend meditation, but, but also if meditation is hard for you, attaching it to yoga is great because then you get that movement element as well. I brush my teeth when I take out my night guard and then I never forget to brush my teeth. Yes, that's fair. And I, I think Stacy probably appreciates that you brush your teeth. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Even though I'm sure that you smell like roses all the time. Okay, so how, <laughs> Stacy forgets, that's amazing. Uh, so how can you prepare? What can you do to mitigate these, uh, these obstacles? How can you get these things so that they're not gonna get in your way, right? And then the next one is how do you want to feel at the end? And this is an important one because visualization really, really helps with mitigating stress and anxiety, which sometimes doing something like this can actually bring up a little stress and anxiety. Um, but also it's a big indicator as to whether or not you're going to, um, to be successful. So it helps, it helps with you actually following, following through with the goal. If you visualize the end result, right? So really thinking about how you want to feel at the end, like Makia was doing before, which was amazing, right? Is writing down how we want to come out of this. And so just a note is that when we're transitioning off of this reset, I mean, and particularly if you're doing something like this is not a detox, right? Where you've cut something like dairy and gluten or whatever, when you're transitioning off, oftentimes people get in this place where they just wanna like walk to the end of the uh, cliff and then they want to jump off, <laughs> right? It's like, oh, I made it. So now I can go back to whatever. And then it's like a binge fest and that is no good for nobody. So maybe taking your time with this transitioning off mindfully if you've removed dairy and gluten how wonderful is it that you can treat this as an elimination diet and then you can add things back in systematically and kind of see how it affects your body right so maybe you uh maybe you add gluten back in for a week two weeks see how it affects your body and then you know if you have a reaction, you can remove it again. And then maybe you try dairy and, or if you don't have a reaction, then you can try dairy and add that back in and sort of see how that affects your body. You've been given this gift, right? You've found baseline. How wonderful is that? Now you can kind of see how, um, how that uh, affects, you know, the, the ways in which you live daily. Uh, home base. So this is always available to you. Always, always, always. That's the coolest thing. I do this all the time all the time. If you stray from your like health, you know, journey, this will always be available for you to come back to baseline. And it can change every time. You guys can do something different every time, create a new reset. How fun is that, right? So last part of this is to pick a date, plan and prepare, and then implement. And then take those two weeks for you, be as selfish as possible, and know that you are doing your body such a kindness. Um, thank you. I know that we have probably have like 30 seconds left. Uh, you can find me at Sarah at smart-mouth.com. I would be happy to answer any questions.
questions, comments, um, whatever you have to tell me, I'm happy, happy all the time to hear it. And um, if you, you know, want to check out my website, it's smart-mouth.com. There's information there. I walk people through this is not a detox. If that's something that's of interest to you, um, I'd be happy to do that with you as well. Um, thank you guys for joining. Oh, oh, birthdays, after your birthdays. Accountability buddies, I love that. Sarah, what you said about, um, about surrounding yourself with people made me think of doing it with, with someone like Jen after our birthdays, what better time, right. To reset. So Sarah, thank you so much. Let's all give her our, our virtual claps. That was awesome. Thank you so, so much for sharing that. Yes. Thank people in the chat, having. they're like, I needed something like this. Feel free to put in the chat your love for Sarah right now while people come back in. Hello, oh everyone. God. Send me your reset. I want to know everything. Yes. So please get in touch. If you were in Sarah's email her, send her your reset of what you chose to do. And it was so good. I heart you, Sarah, all the love. So hello and welcome back everyone. How was yoga? Sumi, would you like to just give us a brief couple words to let us know how it went? It was awesome. I hope everyone feels rejuvenated. We got a little sweat in and then we still got to wind down a little bit. Um, it was pretty funny at the end because like mid Shavasana, I was like, we're about to get blasted back in 60 seconds. But like, <laughs> Just be here for yourself. Like you deserve this last 60 seconds. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you all for participating in those two groups. I hope they were both nourishing in different ways. Um, so I get to be with you for the next couple minutes and close out this amazing night. Yeah, please feel, feel free to use the chat. Um, during my segment. And I love all the love that I'm seeing for the speakers in the chat too. Um, just a big love fest. Yes. Please follow on um, that's Instagram, right? Sumi where you can follow. Awesome. All right, my dears. So I am going to play a little, a little bit of this. All right. So the segment that I am going to be taking you all through is how to stay consistent in the ups and downs of your artistic career. So we just gave a little bit of love to our bodies. We just um, gave a little bit of love to um, a plan for our own health with Sarah. And oh, Oops, sorry. That, oh, no, you're myself. <laughs> If you have to cough, make noise, go for it. Um, so as you'll see um, on the screen, I have this Oscar Wilde quote. So I just want to reflect on this quote for a second. It says, consistency is the hallmark of the unimaginative. And so I personally think this is a myth and I want to bust it. Um, and listen, I understand what he's trying to say here, right? We can easily fall into the trap of doing the same thing over and over again and having it become kind of like a waste of our time. But I kind of have to disagree because I think that uh, the imaginative person is someone who consistently uses their brain and who consistently chooses to dive into their imagination center. And I think it could be one of the most powerful tools that, that we have. Um, and so I say, pshaw to you, Oscar Wilde. Um, and even though I believe that his, his, I honestly, I think his quote goes against how he lived, right? He was so consistent in his works and um, his plays. So let us talk about this. And um, over our time together, I'm going to take you through an exercise. And I just want you to be mindful of what's coming up and, and noting that it's just all information. Um, we're not doing like an overhaul of anything. We're all we're just sort of focusing on what's pulling toward you right now. Um, as you are here in this moment, as we're all on this call together. So um, 
let us pop into consistency. Oh, actually, you know what? I'm just going to say hi real fast. Hi, I'm Danielle, everyone. <laughs> Um, for those of you who don't know me, um, I'm a creative coach. Clinch the Callback was my original company. Um, I did coaching for the last three years with international artists with Zen Red NYC and a program called the Fearless Academy. And now I have my company, The Spirited Storyteller. And I'm also an actor, a producer. Um, I've been a casting director too. Um, by Coastal, my film was just in the Tribeca Film Festival last week. Uh, thank you, everyone. Yes, we premiered and um, it's it's been a lot. And I wear many hats. I'm not wearing any hats on the call, but you get it, right? Okay, so consistency. So this def there's man many meanings of the word. Um, this one, I uh, just wanted to focus on. It's a steadfast adherence to the same principles, course, or form. Um, and... I don't know. Consistency sort of reflects many attributes um, like discipline, self-care, intellect, awareness, and more. So we're going to dive into this word. So if you want to grab a pen and paper, um, please feel free to do so. And I'm going to walk us through. I have an acrostic. Isn't everyone excited? Um, I'm going to walk us through this word of consistency. And like I said, what I'd love you to do is pay attention to what pops out to you. And so when we walk through this, if there's something that is like red alert, red alert, red alert, pay attention, I love you to circle it or make a note because we're gonna talk about it at the end. Um, so don't feel, don't feel like you have to skip ahead, um, but if you notice any strong reactions, like I said, pay attention. All right, so the first one, the sea of consistency I wanna talk about is clarity. So to be consistent, you have to start with a solid foundation, right? So getting clear on what you wanna do, how you wanna spend your time. We talked a lot about this actually in Sarah's breakout room um, is really important. So there's no wrong answer here. This is for how you wanna to choose to live your life and spend your days. So when I lived in New York, I felt pulled in many directions. I live in Los Angeles now. Um, and I remember one year I was like in a band, I was doing stand-up comedy, I was coaching actors, I was working at a restaurant, obviously. And I was auditioning and all the while I was doing things I loved, but I really had no clarity on the through line um, of what I wanted for my life. I was sort of skating by on that New York City energy. And I want to pause and just have you hear this, that being a multifaceted artist or multi hyphenated artist is that's not what I'm talking about here. I'm just talking about finding clarity within in what you want to create. Um, Cause look, look at me, I'm an actor and I'm also a creative coach getting to be here with you guys. So I have, I have these multiple things going on. Um, so within that, I love you. To, I love to take like 20 seconds and and just briefly under clarity write down what's coming up for you um what do you have a need of what you want to get more clear on in your life is something coming up did something arise in this last hour that you want more clarity on in your um creative life um or is there something you've been neglecting that you've always known um so just just write and notice anything I'm gonna give you guys like 10 more seconds. Also, if you notice that it's something not actually in your creative life, but maybe your personal life that's affecting your creative life, you can write that down too. Okay, so the O is for opportunity. So when you have clarity, when you have your eyes on the prize and knowing what it is to look out for, it always makes me think of um, when you buy a certain car, all of a sudden you see your car on the road everywhere, right? So when you have that, that sight set in your mind, the opportunities might start to pop up more. Um, so 
when they arise, having that foundation and clarity is so important. So maybe you're looking for a new job or maybe you're on a dating app and your goal right now is to find your significant other. Um, when you have that clarity and consistency in what you're looking for, and in the definition, that steadfast adherence that we talked about, um, you're ready um, for when those opportunities arise. I have a post-it note here at my desk that says, live prepared. And those, just those two words, um, really broke something open for me um, as, as an actor, performer, and coach, just knowing that I have all those things for that when the opportunity comes, I am prepared. So setting your future self up for success. So I'd love you to take 30 seconds right now and write down anything that's coming up where you're like, man, if I'm gonna live prepared, I should probably have X, Y, Z in place. Maybe it's just, maybe it's just like a quick jot. I don't want us to judge ourselves in this. Maybe it's like, you know what? I have to finish getting that website domain or you know what? I have to send that email I've been sitting on for a month. I see people laughing. It's because it's true, right? So we're all here together, um, ready. I want you guys to be ready for when that opportunity hits. I can't really see the chat. Let me see. Here we go. Great. Okay. And if anything is resonating, you can pop in to chat too. Okay. Let's move on. This next one's really short. I just put it in to be a little cheeky. Um, it's important to be nice. We're going to go with nice here. Um, <laughs> staying consistent in, in being kind because you never know what someone else is going through, especially in your, <laughs> yes, McKay, I love that you were typing website. Perfect. Um, yeah. So for the N nice being kind, because you really don't know what someone is going through. And in that, um, you, and I'm, I want you to hear this. I'm not just talking about being nice and playing well with others to create, you know, um, a life for yourself in this creative environment. I'm also talking about being nice to yourself, being kind, watching yourself talk. We were talking a little bit about limiting beliefs in Sarah's segment. And the thing about those is that they're just beliefs. They're not facts. And so you're allowed to speak kinder to yourself. So that's just a little reminder. Uh, the S also very self-explanatory. Um, sleep. I added this in here because as we all know, getting consistent sleep and rest is just a huge part of being consistent and really showing up for the rest of your life. Um, when you are out there achieving your dreams, it can be exhausting. I, I love Mindy Kaling's story. I read her book, Why Not Me? I think it's like on my shelf somewhere. And yeah, it's right there. And she talks about how when she first started doing show running for, for her show, that her assistant would say, okay, uh, you have seven minutes until you have to be in hair and makeup. And literally anywhere Mindy was, she would just lay down and fall asleep for seven minutes. And I thought, oh, wow, that is a skill. But she that she said that got her through because she was show running and editing and writing and the lead and all those things. So I just want you to hear that that's not something we should just glaze over. Um, OK, the I inconsistency snaps for naps. Yes, Jenna snaps for naps. The I inconsistency. Um, that came up for me was intelligence. And so I'm not just talking about book smart. Um, I think staying consistent also takes an emotional intelligence um, to know when you're doing too much, right? To know when you are overstepping your own boundaries or maybe overstepping boundaries someone else set into place. Um, and within this too, um, 
I just want to acknowledge that imposter syndrome can sometimes kick in. Maybe you're starting to like level up in your career and getting more opportunities. Um, but this goes back to giving yourself permission to be gentle with yourself. So, so this intelligence here is emotional, um, and also body smart, paying attention to your body, doing things, like I said, for the current you do current you doing things for what the future you will thank you for. Um, I always love to do that. I'm like, you know what, tonight I'm going to pack my lunch because tomorrow me is going to be so happy that present me did that. Um, so just sort of paying attention to that. All right. So the S in consistency, this one is a really um, interesting one. The word steward, we don't hear that word a lot, right? Um, but I want to talk about it with stewarding your time. So, um, just being a good, being a good um, babysitter of your time, I guess, so to speak, um, because we can become overwhelmed with so many tasks that we have that are presenting themselves all the time. And as we step out into the real world again after quarantine, I imagine that there are a lot of things vying for your attention. And so um, I just wanted to share this one little tip um, about creating a small agenda. So you're actually able to see where your time goes each day. I'm going to type this into chat really fast. So the first one I love to say is what I did today. I read this in three columns. One, what I did today. So at the end of the day, you go, what did I do today? You actually write it down. Number two, what I planned to do, but did not do that's information right and then the last one is what i wanted to do but did not have time for so those things are different right so looking at these three things might just be one technique and i'm and i'm sure now we have all these different apps and we have these different ways of tracking our time um but i found that these three columns at the end of the day sort of show me like oh hey like i had plans i did all my plans but i didn't do any any of the things i actually wanted to do hmm okay and that's like a part of self-care saying you know Hey, this is, this is my life. I, at least once a day, I, I want to do one thing that I've wanted to do. Right. Um, yeah. So we're about halfway through. So I want you to notice which of these things is really resonating with you again, because we're going to talk about it then. Okay. T talent. Everyone on this call is talented and creative. Every single person on this call is talented and creative. And I want you to think about this T in consistently keeping up on your craft. You can't be a writer unless you write, right? You can't be a designer unless you design. And also here, I want to acknowledge and say this with love because I know that COVID has really rocked our industry as creatives. Um, and so it's, it's been hard, right? I mean, I've, I've called myself an actor. Have I, did I act at the beginning of quarantine? No. Did I, you know, I acted a fool maybe, you know, chilling on my couch. Um, but I didn't really, I wasn't doing my craft. So I just want to say, give yourself grace for that time, but looking forward, I want you to start to see ways that you can really foster your talent, really foster your beautiful talent, because the world is a better place when you are doing it point blank period. We need what you have. And so now with all the platforms out there, there are so many ways to get the word out about your fabulousness. So as this is coming up, I want you to take just 20 seconds, write down some way that you're going to foster your talent, write down some way that's, that's gnawing at you. Is it an acting class? Are you gonna write? Are you gonna write some poetry that Jay Rose brought us through? Are you gonna finish? Are you writing that a play, maybe a script? Do you have a painting that you've been working on? If you want to share it in chat, please do. 
And it's going to be really small or it can be a really big dream too. Yes, Sophie, write songs. Amazing. Finish your book and back, get back to acting class. Amazing. Jenna, you've had a tab open for an acting class that you've wanted to take for the past three days. Man, all those, we go through all of our tabs on our Google. They're just like hanging out on Chrome and it's like, should I click that? Hmm. Yes, Jen, back to journaling, poetry, writing daily. That's, that's great. That's something you can implement with Sarah's program. And Sumi, getting back to journaling and meditating. Great. You guys, this is awesome. And there's no wrong answer here, right? It's for you. Um, that's wonderful. For me, I'll say mine too. For me, it's, um, it's finishing, it's working on the second draft of a, of a short play or a short film. So I'm, I was so nervous to say in front of all of you that I misspoke. <laughs> this is good. This is good. We put it out there, right? All right. Now, this is funny. I forgot to correct this. E is actually the word effectiveness. It's not efficiency. Um, efficiency is something that I find, um, I, yes, nervous because we care exactly. So scrap the word efficiency. The word is effective. Um, and so becoming consistent in your craft, it's going to naturally create more effectiveness, right? In your life. Um, I don't really need to linger on this one a lot, but I, I do want you to think about the question of what is the most effective way that I could show up to X, Y, Z. Um, I kind of guess this goes a little bit with the idea of working smarter, not harder, which goes back to the idea of the intelligence um, that we were talking about before. But but um, I think the, like, what's the most effective way that I can show up, whether that's to your friend's project or to your acting class or to clicking the button to your acting class? How can you show up fully to say, I'm here, I'm feeling these things and I'm doing this for my craft. Um, so just paying attention to that. All right. N, I love this word. No. No, it's not a bad word. Things come up in your daily life that you have choices around, right? So saying no is okay. It's just setting a boundary and taking it even a step further with um, saying no. And then I just had to do this uh, with my film, delegating responsibilities, right? Like, you know what? No, I personally can't do that. But if you have the time, I would, I would love to partner with you on that. And then that person should have their own boundaries and say yes or no, right? Um, and and this one, I know, I think it's easier to implement over time. Um, but I would love right now to take 30 seconds and write something. And this, we can do a yes or a no for this. Write something that you're feeling um, that you're maybe at a crossroads of. And either you just don't have time on your plate and, and you're leaning towards saying no and setting the boundary, or you're gonna say yes and step into it. And saying no is not easy, friends. So I, I just want to say that it's brave to say no. It really is. But you have to do, um, you have to do what your, your future and present self will thank you for. And also within the no, we can bring in the other end, which is nice. You can be kind about saying no. <laughs> All right. Okay, we're getting to the end here. C, charge. This isn't like da 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 da, charge, even though it could be. Um, this is charge money, friends. Literally, charge money. So as artists, um, you have the right to charge for your art. And a lot of the artists I've worked with over the years have undersold themselves. And so many times as artists, we do that. Um, it can be around our limiting, limiting beliefs. 
Um, it can be for many different reasons, but I just want to challenge you. Yes, Jay, Rose, exactly. You are worth it. So I want to challenge you um, to maybe look and see where your prices could go up. Um, where could your rates go up? How much is that photograph actually worth? What should you charge to proofread a script that a playwright's asking you to read? Um, and, and here's the thing, if you're just starting or launching a business, first, I'd love, you can start where you say, okay, what feels right? Ask yourself that, like what feels right? Um, and, and go from there. So I want everyone here to write down if you knew you couldn't fail in your craft. And I'm talking to the actors here. I'm talking to the poets. I'm talking to the designers. I'm talking to the entrepreneurs. If you knew you couldn't fail, I want you to ask yourself what feels right for you to charge right now. Write down some numbers, everyone. Write down some scary numbers. You don't have to put it in chat, but if you want to, you can. Maybe it's okay for coaching, you know, I've been charging, you know, 50 an hour, but you know, your time is really worth at least a hundred. Or maybe you, you created a painting and you're selling it for half as much as it's worth. Thank you for being brave and writing this one. Excellent. Yes, J. Rose, your workshops and coaching should be more. Yes. Especially because you will find your audience that wants it and that is happy to pay it, is happy to pay it. And also, I, I want I want you all to hear this, too. I'm very much for um, I have a friend who's a coach and he has a scholarship program, so I'm very much open. I love the idea of accessibility for artists and, and all these things, but at the same time, his rates are very high. So there are these things going on where at the same time. Um, okay, the last one is yoke up. Yoke is an old term. Um, it's a term for the cross piece that's fastened over the necks of two animals, basically when they're pulling a cart, it's like a really old term. Um, but it literally means to be hooked together. And so I really liked the visual of that. And just ask yourself, who are you yoked with? Who are you surrounded with? Um, who are your people that are doing what you want to be doing? Um, maybe they're new people that you're like, I want to yoke up with that person. So just think about that. You know, are they challenging themselves? Are they growing? And are you challenged? Are you being challenged from that? Awesome. Okay. So I want to acknowledge that we just covered a lot of ground. You might have some things coming up for you. That is totally okay. So let's whittle it down here. So what's your one? So I would love you all to choose one thing from that acrostic that came up for you. And maybe you want to implement it this week. Maybe it's maybe it's like the post-it note that I wrote, be prepared. Maybe it's one thing you want to write down, stick it on your mirror. So I want to encourage you to chunk this down, take it one step at a time. So everyone just take a moment to choose. And similar to um, our breakout session with Sarah, we're gonna put it into motion this week. So choose a date of your one. And and maybe this is, maybe you can also look and say, ooh, I'm really good in this area. You know, so celebrate that one. So you have, you were good, really good in this area and this is the one you wanna work on. All right, everyone. Steward, sleep. Yes. Excellent, everyone. So um, this is my website. I would love to offer everyone here a clarity call with me if you would so choose. Um, it's just like a 15 minute, 30 minute call um, where we can talk more if you're interested in learning more about coaching with me. That's the website. Ooh, being effective, yes. Absolutely. And let's stay in touch. Here's my information. 
follow me on Instagram, the spirit of storyteller. Um, I have a great email list where I give out freebies and a bunch of stuff on the spirit at storyteller.com. And I think that actually for my portion is about it. So I know we've gone a little bit over in time, but thank you all. Yeah. Let's all give each other some rounds of jazz hands and applause. Um, thank you all so much for coming to the art of wellness tonight. This has been wonderful. So just a couple little reminders that you will all be receiving um, just a little post event survey. We would love to get your feedback on how the night went for you. And you'll also be getting that digital goodie bag. Hey, um, so just a huge shout out to our sponsors, Smart Mouth, The Spirited Storyteller, The Rose Garden, Yoga Vita, Final Light Photography, and Blink Fitness. Thank you all so much for being our sponsors. It means so much. And lastly, please follow Off The Lane on Instagram. It's at Off The Lane. You can visit offthelane.org to stay in touch. And we just thank you so much. It really means a lot for you carving out time to be with us today. We really, really appreciate it. So thank you and have a lovely night, everyone.